Hello, my listeners, and welcome back to Undertale If. We just finished the ruins, so we're heading off into Snowden. Let's see if we can find our skeleton sands. You've left the ruins. I can't believe you made it out without killing anyone. Flabby says. He lifts his head off your shoulder and beams at you. You're amazing. Yes, you are an amazing woman. You are a woman. If someone here would describe you, they would use, she is a woman. Her outfit looks nice today. She's going out tonight. You deserve all the praise. Shut up, character. You're being weird again. Knowing how amazing you are fills you with determination. I'm going to get the ego the size of a blimp at this, right? You clap your hands together and enthusiastically step forward. Your boots crunch into snow. Snow? Snow? For some reason, there's snow outside the ruins. The path leading up to the ruin door is mostly untouched, which means no one has come out of the ruins since it last snowed. Inside a mountain? It snowed inside a mountain. Will wonders ever see snow? This is Undertale. Oh, sorry, this is Underfell. I mean, Undertale's the same, but still. Wonders never cease in this world. You look at them, ponder if you'll see clouds. I highly doubt it. And surprisingly, you do not see clouds. The cave ceiling is much higher out here than in the ruins, but it's still certainly a cave ceiling. The ceiling is mostly a dark brown with stalactites that hang from the ceiling and glitter a faint red. Well, that's not at all ominous. Be sure to be quiet now, because otherwise those are going to come down and skewer at you and kill you on the spot. Good lord. While the ceiling is tall, you do not think it is tall enough to allow change in the weather. Yeah, how is that he does weather work down there anyway? That was something I was curious about, like, in normal Undertale. How has he got snow underground? You squint your eyes. Then again, this is a magical kingdom. What you know is logical is likely irrelevant here. Good answer. Thank you, character, for answering that one for me. You shiver. It is rather chilly, isn't it? Your violet eyes peer around. There's not much to see aside from the snow and leafless black trees. A small wind picks up snow flurries that dance around your pair of leggings. Are you cold? Flowey asks with a concern. You admit you aren't well dressed to be trekking through the snow. Admittedly, I forgot to dress them appropriately because I just wanted to get on with the adventure. Shame on me. Flowey places leaves on your back. There's a tingly sensation and suddenly you are much warmer. I, I don't have much magic, but I can at least keep you warm, Flowey says with a shy smile. You turn your head to better face him and he bumps your nose against his in a nuzzling manner. Oh, that is so freaking adorable. I am never letting this flower go. And since you're protecting both of us, you should keep warm. Oh, you gently bump your nose against his. You thank Flowey. You feel much better about your journey now. Oh, Flowey is so sweet in this AU. Oh, he would never, ever, ever just crash a game suddenly, this version. No, he'd be so sweet. He wouldn't want to. You take your next step through the snow. It's deep enough that your entire foot sinks into it. Lucky your boots are the water-resistant kind. You walk through the snow and keep your gaze sharp to look for any potential monsters or traps. Be sure to also keep an eye up on that ceiling in case the stalactites come down. If monsters love puzzles so much, you expect to run into them at some point. It is completely silent in the snowy forest, except for your footsteps. You wonder what you will face. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Flurry raises his head. I haven't left the runes in a long time. The monsters outside are much stronger. Y you have to be careful. Crunch, crunch, crunch. You imagine the soul isn't comfortable for this flower either. Well, no, he's a flower. Bless the poor little thing. Then again, he's a monster. Does he feel the cold? Because I know Sansa and Papyri sure don't. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Flowey chuckles. Yeah, past Snowden, it warms up. It only snows here. Crunch, crunch. Oh, you were about to ask why when crunch, snip, snap, crunch? Snip, snap? You stop walking. What's wrong? Flowey asks. You didn't step on anything that can make that noise. You look around. Oh, is that our, is that our resident skeleton? You seem a little spooked, human. 
draws a deep, gravelly voice. You jump and gasp in surprise. Okay. Oh, there we go. Since we are going after Sans, we're going to need to go for the hearts. You let an eep and turn around to face the owner of the new voice. The monster is a skeleton, you think. He is short in stature, but he has a roundness to him that should be impossible for a skeleton. He wears black with yellow striped shorts, a red tall neck, and a black jacket with a fur-lined hood. He leers at you. What a cute noise. What other sound do you make when poked, violet eyes? Uh, how about not poking me? I would, like, 100% appreciate no poking. Um, we can't be too forward with him, since this is based more on... This is based on Vic's version of Underfell, so this means this is more of an aggressive one, rather than the community fandoms, you know, that one. So we need to be really careful with this one. He will definitely freaking kill me. I'm pretty sure. Um, you blush from the strange skeleton's words. There we go. The skeleton's grin seems to widen. The red lights in his sockets brighten. You're interesting. Tell you what, you do well, we'll see what other colour I can make you. Oh my, wait, other colour, what colour are we talking about? Because he could always make me white as a sheet, hence, aka kill me, or make me red by killing me. Look at me, I'm going to 100% hold him at probably an arm's length, I don't know, from the ruined door to his own freaking house. That's how far I'm keeping him away from me at present because again we just met him and we saw what Tori was like. Tori definitely would have killed me had I taken the tea. You can't trust that Tori with tea. She would have killed me. And absolutely definitely killed me. Um, You're so red in the face you think you might spontaneously combust. You bury your face in your hands and let out an odd squeaky noise. It takes you a moment to recover, during which the skeleton keeps chuckling at you. You finally manage to calm yourself enough to meet his gaze. You shyly ask the skeleton if that's a promise. Yeah, sure, sweetheart. <laughs> sure, sweetheart. You smile. You still feel shy as you hold out your hand and introduce yourself. Sans. It's kind of weird that it says Sans be here if he hasn't introduced himself yet, but I know I'll let it go. Sans suggests his red gloved hand for a moment before he accepts your hand. Nice to meet you, sweetheart. The name's Sans. Sans the skeleton. You tell Sans it is nice to meet him too. Sans lets out a small he. <laughs> you notice his teeth are carnivorously sharp and he has one golden tooth on his upper left side. You should come with me, sweetheart. Meet my brother, Sans says. I, I think I will pass. I don't want to meet him just yet. Don't waste your time on this smiley trash bag, Twinkle. You'll do a lot better. Flowey loudly whispers in your ear while glaring at Sans. Because again, Flowey's had more experience out here. Maybe he has had a confrontation with Sans where Sans has tried to hurt him. Or even Papyrus. We don't know. He's been through a lot, this little flower. And I need to protect him. <laughs> you want to speak up and say that to my face, you weed? Sans snarls. What are you doing with that thing, sweetheart? We're companions, you bully. Flowey stampers out briskly. I doubt a brute like you will even know what, what that term means. <laughs> Is that so? Sans, you're talking big game for a weed in a backpack. How's about you hop out of that thing and we can have a little heart to heart? Oh no, Sans is... Sans is, like, there's no extra word here, so there's a little type over here. Sans is supposed to, like, say something there. Flowey shrinks behind you, burying himself against the back of your neck. Oh my goodness, the poor baby. No! No, no, no. Sans, you're freaking huge compared to him. Leave him alone. He's a baby. You have a very sweet smile and hold up your hands in a calming gesture. There's no need to fight. You'd be happy to meet his brother, especially if his brother is anything like him. He is not like him, though. Sans seems mollified. Well, uh, alright. Little shit ain't worth the effort. Come on, sweetheart. 
Sans takes the lead. You notice he doesn't sink as deep into the snow like you do. In fact, he doesn't leave any footprints behind. The snow quickly morphs and fills up the holes behind him. It's a curious thing to watch. You glance behind you notice that your footsteps are also being filled in by the surrounding snow. Although it happens at a much slower rate. You ask Sans about it. Eh, well, surface snow doesn't? Sans asks you. You tell him no. Surface snow doesn't do that. Probably because of magic then, Sans says. He shrugs. You should have had a lot of... You don't have a lot of magic on the surface, do you? You actually do. Huh? Sans pauses, walking. He looks up and squints at the ceiling. Then probably because see your weather goes through a pan, right? Waterfalls gets hot and rises, makes clouds, which the snow or rain rises and repeats. You confirm that's correct. You're impressed by his knowledge about the surface weather. Oh, whatever, he said. Although you notice he is smiling. Here the temps the same in each zone. Chilly here, hot in hot land, so on and so forth. But the magic... Sans taps the snow with his foot. It's everywhere here. Everywhere. Who a place is so drenched in mind the environment sometimes does its own thing. We don't get clouds for snowy days. Snow leaks out of the ceiling. Probably pulled from one of the rivers, absorbed into the stone, and since it's cold here, it turns to snow. That's amazing! Your purple eyes sparkle with wonder. Sam coughs and looks away from your earnest expression. Not that neat, sweetheart. Yes, it is. It's impressive. Come on. I mean, I was snow. Here in the UK, we don't get snow guaranteed every year round. So... Yeah. It is, and it's wonderful that he knows enough about you to explain it to you. You sincerely thank him for that. You think you see his skeleton red, but he starts to stomp ahead of you before you can get a good look. Whatever, come on, sweetheart, keep up, will you? You happily follow behind him. You've made him flustered. Well, that's a good job, then. Wait, am I going to have to fight Papyrus? I have to fight Papyrus, don't I? Ah, biscuits. I think we actually have to fight Papyrus. Because we're going to have to do the puzzles. And then if he goes for a date thing, we're going to have to fight him, aren't we? Oh, poo. Because it seems to follow the route of like what you do in the actual Undertale. The path through the snowy forest leads out to a wide clearing. Sand stops at the end of the path and points to the far right. That way we'll take you to Snowden, he says. Of course, you'll have to get approved to enter by the boss first. Boss? Yep. Sans puts his hand in his pocket. He should be here any second, sweetheart. So try it, okay? He's, you smile and agree. This is really suspicious, Flowey whispers. It's fine, he's cute. Sans twitches. You didn't say it very loud. You were whispering back to Flowey, but you get the feeling that he heard you. Flower gives you a pity look. I'm starting to doubt your judgement again. That's okay. You still have you. You'll be okay. It's alright if your judgement sucks. Sans, there you are, you lazy bones! There is a loud voice ahead of you. You see a skeleton in red and black clothes marching across the snow-covered plains. Even at a distance, you can see he's tall. Taller than any human you've ever met. He strides across the snow with ease and stops short when he notices you. There is a good bit of distance between you and the new skeleton, but he is close enough that you can see his appearance. He has semi-closed eyes with two scars on his right side and sharp teeth like Sans. He's wearing a red scarf cape, a pointed black shirt, black trousers and long red gloves. He looks cool. Sorry for missing our meetup time, bro. Uh, boss, he says. I'm so used to Sans saying bro rather than saying boss. This is going to throw me off. He says Sans, his tone a touch nervous. You notice there's a bead of red glistening sweat on his skull. I was escorting this human. Sans is scared. I can infer as much as... Sans, hello, human, says the skeleton. You introduce yourself with a smile. The skeleton tilts his head. A human who knows basic manners. Will Sans actually tell a funny joke next? Hey, 
Sans immediately protests that one. Human, I will give you the honour of knowing my name. I am the great Papyrus of the Royal Guard. It is my duty to capture or kill all humans who trespass into our kingdom. Hold, hold the phone. What do you mean, kill? Well, nobody. What happened to capturing me and taking me alive? Excuse you. Also, congratulations. You're a royal guard. Wait a minute. Hold the phone. Papyrus wanted to catch a human so that way he could become a member of the royal guards. But in Underfell, Papyrus already is a member of the royal guards. And it's his job to catch humans slash kill them. Well, poo. Least I know who killed them. That's not good for you. You considered how to respond. Papyrus doesn't give you much time. Human, you have caught me at a good time. Oh, does that mean he won't try to kill you? Let's hope so. His expression lightens to that of amusement. <laughs> Don't be a, a sane. Instead, I will give you a choice. Surrender here or now and I will capture you instead of killing you. Or you may try to proceed and die in a horrible manner by my traps. Traps? Like puzzles? Yes, human. Oh, you love puzzles. You're enthusiastically agree to try out the puzzles. Oh? Sun stares at you dubiously. What? Seriously? Yes, you are so disappointed that none of the puzzles worked in the ruins. This is... You are definitely not me because I hate puzzles. I'm not too fond of them. I'd rather just get to the story and not deal with the puzzles. But hey, we're doing it. It's hard to get a read on Papyrus' mood. His face is difficult to read and his body language is standoffish. Your guide, however, tells you he feels hesitant, uncertain, perhaps even unsettled. These are not toys, human. They will kill you. Maybe or maybe not. Regardless, it's better than fighting Papyrus now. And who knows? These puzzles might be fun. Papyrus smiles at you. You wonder yourself if he's putting on a front. Very well. How could I refuse such enthusiasm? Come here, brother. Sans gives you a wink as he walks over to Papyrus. See you later, sweetheart. You blush. Sand looks pleased with himself. Papyrus watches as they exchange with a narrow gaze. You can't tell if he's unhappy or if this is his normal expression. But hey, at least he noticed. Are you prepared, human? You jubilantly beam. Yes, yes you are. You can do this. The idea of getting to conquer monster puzzles fills you with determination. I am going to freaking die. Oh god, we're going to... Music is going to start, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Oh wait, am I doing... I'm doing his um, thing puzzle first, aren't I? I'm not doing the other thing. Filled with determination, you tell Papyrus that you are ready. This first puzzle is one I only recently added, says Papyrus. You see this space between us? There is a trap buried underneath the snow. Any non-magical living creature who steps onto the trap will be shockingly unhappy. <laughs> Papyrus laughs to himself. It is infectious laugh that you can't resist smiling from. How can you cross something like that? Flowey's voice is drenched with worry. Do not worry, human. I am a monster with integrity. All my puzzles have solutions, even for creatures like you. There is a path where the trap will not activate. For the puzzle, all you must do is find that path. Papyrus drags a foot through the snow in front of him to create a line. If you can reach me here, you will succeed and I will allow you to move on to the next puzzle. Simple enough. You can do this. I can't do this. It's a puzzle. I suck at this. <laughs> We're gonna die. <laughs> but also, this is following... Uh, what is the comic I saw this in? I saw this exact thing play out in a comic. And, like, you get to see that Papyrus originally was actually really sweet when he was younger. And then he puts up this friend to protect his brother because that's the type of world they live in. The monsters don't want to do this deep down. It's just, it's the rule. It's the law. They can't go against the law. You know, until a little child comes along and teaches them right from wrong. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to warn you all. We're probably going to die. Forward you go? No. I don't know if forward would be the best idea. Uh, Forward you go? 
Oh my goodness, forwards was correct. Holy moly, we actually made it. The first step was correct. You take a couple steps forward. So far, so good. Which way now? Okay. All right, so it's forward and it's right. So now, which way do we go? You take a step to the right. Still alive. Nice. Which way now? Uh, you... Why is this continuously popping up down here? Stop it. I don't know if that's popping on the recording. I'm hoping it's not. You hop forward. Oh my god, it actually worked. I hopped forward, really. So it's... Oh, I'll show you did that without thinking. My goodness. You hop forward. You're doing fantastic. Which way now? How many twists and turns do I have to take? I'm going to save. I'm going to save. This is going too well. I don't like that. I don't like when things are going too well. I'm going to die. Um... Okay, left. You go left. Every bit of you is doing fine. Well done. Which way now? Forward? Oh my goodness. Huh. Do I just keep going forward at this point? You know what? Let's do forward again because the character's shouting. Forward! You cross the line drawn in the snow. You did it! You made it through the puzzle! Wow. Says Sans. First try. Beginner's luck, eh? Twinkle is very small, Flowey loudly says behind you. Well done, human, says Papyrus. You smile. Papyrus' eyes narrow. Do not get cocky, human. You say you're looking forward to the next puzzle. Then let us not rally. Come, human. This next puzzle was put together by my brother. Oh. <laughs> Sansa's reaction. Oh. It goes Sans, looking uncomfortable. Papyrus knows immediately. What is wrong, brother? Uh, well, you see, boss, I've been meaning to set it up, really. I just didn't find the time. What do you mean you didn't find the time? All you do is sleep or drink a grilled bees. If you spend a fraction of the time you spend laughing around on your puzzles... Papyrus stomps the ground, the red gleam in his eyes brightening. Uh, Sans winces from Papyrus' lecture. You offer to wait for Sans to put the puzzle together. Papyrus sighs loudly. No, no, then. We would be here all day. Let us simply move on to mine. You agree. You say you are looking forward to the next puzzle. Papyrus gives you an undecipherable look. You can't tell if he's dubious of your claim or pleased. You hope he's pleased. You cross the plains. You decide to walk beside Sans. He gives you a wink when he notices. It makes you feel warm and happy inside. What are you doing giving me random winks, skeleton? Sans, please. This is a serious moment. I need to stay focused. Don't distract me by winking. You're like my freaking cat, Poppy. She winks at me randomly. Poppy keeps... Uh, Poppy. Flowey keeps his head on your shoulder in a gesture of support as you walk. There are many dead trees on the outskirts of the plains, along patches of ice that is difficult to walk. Papyrus and Sans remain completely unbothered by the terrain. Either the skeletons can use magic to make their journey easier, or they simply are accustomed to it. You look around as you walk. There's not much more to see aside from the snow, ice, a cave ceiling, and dead trees. After some time of trekking through the snow, you start to feel your toes go numb. You think it would be nice to get out of the snow soon. It is then that you spot a wooden bridge, and on the other side of the bridge, you can see buildings. A town. Stay here, human. Oh no, it's the Bridge of Doom. Of course it is, says Papyrus as he and Sans cross the bridge. You take the time to inspect the bridge. It covers a chasm between the forest and the town. The chasm stretches to your right and to the left, as far as your eyes can see. You wait for them to cross. Once Papyrus and Sans arrive on the other side of the bridge, Papyrus awards you with a smile. Your manners have impressed me, human. You are the first of your kind to do so. That surprised you. Were the other humans not polite? Your question makes Sans and Papyrus laugh. Why should I be surprised? They probably were hysterical. They probably just wanted to get home. I mean, some of them were rescue teams and stuff like that, so... Seeing a monster, you know, something unexpected, yeah. And considering that they had to go through the ruins first, 
Do you blame them? They had to go through Mama Tori. If they got past Tori and got to these two, just imagine. <laughs> Good joke, sweetheart. Sans laughs. The humans I have encountered would normally attack on sight, says Papyrus, or start acting hysterically. Sobbing, screaming, pleading was embarrassing to watch, sneers Sans. Oh, those poor humans. But as you have remained civil company, I will give you a chance for the honour to face me, says Papyrus, if you make it across the bridge. You do not want to fight him. Wait, what's wrong with the bridge? Good of you to ask, human. You know Papyrus has his hand on a, on a pedestal at the end of the bridge. He pulls out a red crystal from the pedestal and the bridge disappears. You and Flowey gasp. This is a magical bridge. It will only exist as long as it has magic. Papyrus hoists the crystal into view. This is the crystal that supplies that magic. Papyrus places the crystal back on the pedestal. The wooden bridge disappears. I will ask you a question. If you answer it correctly, you may advance. If you don't, I will remove the crystal and you will fall to your death. You take a glance at the chasm between you and the village. You may, of course, refuse this challenge. Another snowstorm is due tonight, so you will likely freeze to death if you remain out here. Papyrus laughs. <laughs> not much of a choice, is it? No. No, not really. That's a pretty dick move of you. You're horrible. <laughs> this bridge is the only way into Snow Jane, which is absolute malarkey, the fact that there's only one way into this bloody town. Though for Sans this too, because he can just teleport over there, but still. Your only way is forward. Either freeze to death from the inaction, fall to your death from stupidity, or die by my hands in battle. None of these options are appealing, but you think at least one of those choices can be changed. You take a step on the bridge and give Papyrus a grin. You are filled with determination. You will take on his challenge and you will win. Good, let's start off with something easy. Papyrus taps on the crystal with a claw, red gloved hand. I speak without a mouth and hear without ears. I have no body, but I come alive with the wind. What am I? Hmm. I speak without a mouth. I hear without ears. I have no body, but I come alive with the wind. What am I? It's not a name that makes no sense. It's not music. It's either a flute or an echo. I speak without a mouth. You hear an echo, and it can speak without a mouth. Is it an echo? I want to say it's an echo or a flute, but I think it's an echo. You may take a few steps forward, human, says Papyrus. You do so. The bridge creaks underneath you. You stop and Papyrus holds up his hand. He smiles at you when you do. You get the feeling it's a warm smile than before. Next question. I add 6 to 11 and get 5. Why is this correct? It's a, It's time. Time, you explain. 6 hours to 11 a.m. would make it 5 p.m. Papyrus nods approvingly. He smiles, widening. You may reach halfway. I will ask you one more question, human. You made it halfway. One more question to go. You got this, Twinkle. What disappears as soon as you say its name? What? Um, uh, says Flowey. What is the answer? Silence, because once you say it, the silence is broken. It's the only thing that would make sense there. I've heard that riddle before. Next. Congratulations, human. You have the bare minimum of t intelligence needed to fight me, says Papyrus. He's like, unless you pass this quiz and stuff, I wouldn't have dared fight you because it'd be too stupid for me. <laughs> you thank Papyrus for the compliment. You think he's happy for a moment. And then his smile drops and his posture's shifts to stand off it again. He clears his throat. I will let you pass. You may visit Snowdin for your final meal. I will be waiting for you at the end of town. If you keep me waiting too long, I will hunt you down. So do not dally, human. It's nice he's on you pass now. That's one step closer to being his friend. 
The thought of it fills you with determination, even though technically you'd probably be terrified. Papyrus waits for you to reach the end of the bridge. As soon as your feet touch the solid ground, you are instantly relieved. Well, enjoy your stay, sweetheart, says Sans. He waves goodbye to you as he leaves. We made it to Snowden, Twinkle, says Flowey. Yes. Yes, you did. Enter Snowden. Snowden. It's a cute village, you think. The path from the bridge leads to the main street. There are so many shops lined up along the main street. And behind those shops are rows and rows of houses. There are lampposts lined along the pathways, each with a red crystal that dully glows. It's futuristic of a snow town you see in the family movies. Not at all what you imagine to be a monster town. Why not? Monsters can live in cute places too, even if they try to kill you. No one said monsters couldn't live in cute places. There's... Alright, let's see. Um, where was I? Monster Town. There is snow on each roof. You can see smoke. <clears throat> there is snow on each roof. You can see smoke billowing out of the chimneys. The smoke spirals lazily into the air before being absorbed into the cave ceiling. The red stalactites from above have cast everything in a reddish hue. I'm still concerned that those are above. Like, how many monsters have died by the hands of those wretched things? You know some monsters in the town? They ignore you. I'm actually really thankful they're ignoring me. I honestly thought as soon as I entered the town, everything would try to kill me. At least they're not attacking you. Snorin is one of the few villages outside the kingdom. Flowey explained. The monsters here tend to stay disconnected. Why is that? I, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe you could ask Sansa about it later. It's probably to do with Sansa Papyrus. Wouldn't surprise me. For now, you should decide what to do. Papyrus doesn't want to be kept waiting, but it feels like it'd be a waste to ignore the town. At the very least, you want to go inside somewhere to warm up your poor little toes. Or maybe you'd rather explore elsewhere before venturing further into Snowdon. We're gonna leave. It'd be nice to explore a bit more since you didn't get a chance to earlier. You're not going inside? Flowey asks you. You explain to Flowey you want to take a look around. It's not every day you get to explore a magical kingdom. This isn't as much of a kingdom anymore, Flowey remarks. Maybe so. You follow the path outside of Snowdon and cross the bridge. There's a divide in the road. The path going straight is where you came from. It'll take you back to the ruins. But the path on your right and left are new. Who knows where they could lead you? Take the left. Your boots crunch in the snow. All is silent. There's a wind that picks up bits of snow. You stretch out your hand. Snowflakes hit and melt against your hand. Why does the wind blow underground? You look up at the stalactites. It all calls from magic and magic. Really do so much. Is it really all calls from magic? Can magic really do so much? It's magic. You don't have any other explanation. This whole ecosystem seems dependent on magic. Humans rely on magic as well, but not to this extent. The wind blows from gases moving through high pressure areas to low pressure areas. It rains because the sun heating up the water to start a cycle. There's day and night because the world rotates. None of that is magical. It's all learned science. Though technically, a long time ago to humans that didn't know about all these different things, that is magic. Science is magic in its own right. Yet underground, there's only magic to make these things happen. Why? What moves magic to behave in such a way? If one day it decided to stop for water re for a reason, did it have to start in the first place? How would the monsters adapt? It's a curious thought. They're clearly doing well for themselves considering their limited space. If the situation were reversed, could the magicless humans be able to live underground? Eh, probably. We find a way to adapt. That's the best thing about humans. They can adapt. I just don't know how well they would adapt. No, you don't think so. Yes, do you think they could adapt? You're not sure. Oh, I think this is an option, but uh, you can't actually activate it. I think this is an option by here. 
There's a heavier crunch in the snow behind you. You turn around and realize you've been followed. There's a massive monster in spiky black armor in front of you. Yet the head is that of a white dog. Here comes Greater Dog. Well, we're gonna ignore Greater Dog. It's cold. The air smells like wet dog, so we'll ignore him. Greater Dog inches closer. Okay. Um, we keep ignoring him. He inches closer. Alright. Ignore him again. Mm, he's inching closer. I need him to be close. Don't I? Pet the dog? They're not close enough. Okay. So ignore the greater dog again. Ignore. How do I know when he's close? Surely he's close by now. Oh. That's how I know. <laughs> Oops. Let's pet the greater dog. How about we beckon him? You call the greater dog. Greater dog's ears pricks up and they bound towards you. Flecking slobber into your face. Here comes greater dog. Well, in that case, let's pet the dog. Greater dog curls up in your lap as they are petted by you. You smooth their... You smoosh their squishy cheeks and they let their little yip. Here comes Greater Dog. Okay, so let's play with Greater Dog. Uh, let's see. You make a snowball and throw it for the dog to fetch. It spars on the ground. Greater Dog picks up all the snow in the air and brings it to you. You praise them for being such a good puppy. They immediately... This immediately pleases them. They make another... You make another snowball and throw it. They bring you more snow. You now have enough snow to make a snowfall. The two of you decide to make a snowfall with Flowey watching on. It is a beautiful snowfall until Greater Dog sneezes and everything falls apart. That's okay. At least you had fun. Uh, pet him? As you pet the dog, they sink their entire weight into you. You pet decisively. Pet can be reached 100%. The dog flops over their legs hang up in the air. That's good. Okay, so now we'll, we'll we'll cuddle the greater dog. You hook your arm around the back of greater dog's neck and you give them nose boops and nuzzles. Greater dog enthusiastically returns your hug. They squeeze you uncomfortably tight. The two of you enjoy a friendly cuddle fest in the remains of your snow fort. After some time, greater dog must leave. The two of you say goodbye to each other. It is time to go to Snowden. Well... Hmm. Oh, what's this? Greater dog is trying to catch my attention. What does he want? You spot a familiar face. It's your cuddling buddy. Greater dog bounds over to you. Their arm are clanking with each step. They have something in their mouth. When they bend over to show you, you see that it's a stick. They are offering you the stick. You realize that it's very important to greater dog, this stick. It is a treasured stick. You carefully accept the stick. Greater dog nuzzles your face. Their nose is cold and wet. They lick your cheek. Hmm? What? Don't do that! Flowey squawks from behind. Don't kiss her! You giggle from their tick- From the- From how ticklish their tongue is on your cheek. You pull away. They're wagging their tail happily. You thank them for the stick. You decide to keep it in the back part with Flowey. It's just a stupid stick, Flowey mutters. You have gained a stick. Congratulations. And Flowey, it's not just a stick. This is a stick given to me by my cuddle buddy. I am now cuddle buddies with greater dog. Do you know how much honor that is? This gigantic massive dog that could have easily killed me is now my cuddle buddy. I feel very blessed. He is so cute, so fluffy, and I love his armor. He looks so badass. And now we have a stick to prove I was, I'm was i friends with him. Nice. Okay, so where are we gonna go? Um... I don't feel like going inside Grim because I think I'd be instantly killed. I don't know. I just have a bad feeling about this. Okay, um... You notice some kind of deer monster rubbing his antlers frantically against a brick wall. Let's go and see this. You notice a deer monster frantically rubbing his antlers against the side of one of the shops. You approach the deer and hear him cursing, Stupid bloody brats. Oh dear. You ask the deer monster if he needs help. He whirls around and you notice... 
He has the body of a reindeer with a mouth that opens sideways and has many sharp teeth. His antlers go in many different directions and are covered in odd ornaments. From you? Aren't you human? He demands. Yes, yes you are. No, go away. You point out that you have two hands and opposable thumbs. He stares at you. You stare at him. You try anything, anything and I'll gut to you. He warns. You understand. Help him with the ornaments. You carefully pluck each of the ornaments off and toss them into the snow. Some of, some of it has been entangled with antlers, so it takes you several minutes. He sighs with relief once you're done. Thanks, sir, human. You introduce yourself. I'm Kvrtrov, he says. Must say it's rare to see a human alive, at least. How did you avoid those skeletons? You didn't. Papyrus gave you permission to visit the village. He's waiting for you at the end. Oh, my condolences. It is a sweet sauce, but you find it unnecessary. You won't die. Gibbertrop dips his head to you. I hope you can enjoy what time you have left. You'll enjoy your time in Snowden as best as you can. Enter Snowden. Okay. Hmm. Um. Let's go see what's going on down there. We'll go check out what the noises. Off the side of the main road, there's an alleyway, squashed between two buildings. The building on the left appears to be some kind of barn in Grillby's, and the building on the right says Sydney's. Sydney's. You notice a lot of buildings use a Z instead of an S. Must be a monster thing. The alleyway seems to serve as the side roads to connect the Sharping Road to the homes behind. Down this particular alleyway, you hear low groans. You see a dog monster laying half buried in the snow. Kill him, says Flowey. What? No, Flowey, control yourself. Don't you see his armour? He's from the Royal Guards, Flowey protests. He'll kill you as soon as he notices you. No, you're not going to kill anyone. Twinkle. You turn your head to gently bump your head against Flowey's. He smiles at you. You approach the monster. He's black and white fur and wears a spiked collar. Oh, I know who this is. You bend down to gently shake the monster. He lets out another low grow. groan. You ask the monster if he needs help. Help? I, I don't... The monster slurs his words, then hiccups. He's struggling to move and only ends up flailing in the snow. Yush. Thankfully, the dog monster is very lightweight. You move the backpack to face front and then you hoist the dog onto your back. He weighs less than a standard bicycle. Which surprises you as he's an average height. He hiccups into your ear. Gross, he's drunk, Flowey complains. My home, he hiccups and vaguely points off to the right. With much effort, his added weight makes you sink further into the snow. With each step, you manage to carry him to his home. He fumbles with his key before opening the French door. You take him inside and place him on his couch and give him a good pat. Because he's a very good boy. You tell him he is a good boy. His tail wags. You then take your leave, satisfied with what you've done. Oh my goodness, that was so cute. Okay, so now let's go help the bunny. You notice a bunny struggling. You notice a purple bunny woman trying to pry toilet paper off the front of a store. She's muttering under her breath as she does. She has a lot of toilet paper to remove. It will likely take her a long time. You decide to offer a hand. Flowey senses your intention right away. What are you doing? Why? We shouldn't be focusing on getting. Shouldn't we be focusing to get past Papyrus? You'll be okay. It doesn't hurt to help someone. Here it does. These monsters might be attacking you right now. Might not be attacking you right now, but if you give them a chance, they will kill you. It's a kill or. Kill or be killed down here, you know? You aren't dead now, and neither are any monsters. Those aren't the rules you go by. Fowey does. Doesn't know how to argue that. He wilts. I, I don't want you to get hurt. Please be careful. You reassure him that you will. You approach the woman with a smile. She wearily eyes you. What do you want? You offer to help clean up. Why? Why not? She squints at you. Will you let in? Yes. She leans back and peers down to the end of the road. You both can see Papyrus waiting for you. She lets her sigh. <sighs> sure, knock yourself out. You smile and step up beside her. The two of you work on pulling the toilet paper down. It's trickier than you anticipate as the toilet paper has been soaked by the snow, so it tears easily. 
What's your name? She asks. You introduce yourself. I'm Violet, she says. If it's not obvious, I own the shop. You inquire about what she sells. General goods, she says. Some candies. <laughs> Sweet like you. She snorts and starts to laugh loud. What a cheeky thing you are. You beam. You ask if she has anything else at her store. What, like human candy? Violet teases you. As if the humans that have arrived down ex don't exactly offer their wares. You check your pockets. Do you have any human candy? Sadly not. Only your dead phone. She notices. That's a working phone. You explain it works. It's just dead. She holds her hand and gives you give her your phone and she looks at the port. Shame the port doesn't match up. She would have let you charge your phone in a store. Sure, why not? You're gonna die anyway, she says. You will not. She gives you an odd smile. The two of you work in tandem for a solid ten minutes. You get the toilet paper off, but your fingers are very cold and stiff. She looks you over, her gaze lingering on your fingers. Since you were sweet and all, she says, why don't you warm up inside for a bit? Oh yes, that sounds nice, doesn't it? You, cry, you gratefully accept the offer. Enter Snowden. Um, I'm pretty sure if I remember about Grillbees in here, I think he just instantly freaking killed me. I'm pretty sure I'm dead if I walk in Grillbees, you know? So I wonder if this going in Grillbees, I feel like this is, this will get me instantly killed. So I want to click on it. I'll click on it, but if, if I'm right, okay, I'm saying right now that I'm not going to pick this option because I think I'm going to die. So, clicking it, yeah, I would have died. Okay, just to clarify, yeah, I would have. So it was a good call on my end to not do that. Looks like it's time to press on and meet with Papyrus. Your boots crunch into the snow-covered road. You can see Papyrus at the end of the village. You feel much warm of spending time in Violet's shop. Chloe hugs your back. Are you ready? Chloe asks. Yes, you are. You are filled with determination. Here comes Papyrus. Papyrus is standing between you and the only way of Snowden. You can, you can do this, Chloe whispers, encouragingly in your ears. Yes, yes, you can. There's a thrum of warmth inside you and you can feel your soul reacting to the battle. Its pink light illuminates the world around you and Papyrus stares at it. Enjoyed your final meal, human, Papyrus asks you, his gaze focused on your soul. Sadly not. It's time I, the great Papyrus, will defeat you here and now, human. As the strongest member of the Royal Guards, I will not fail. You will die today, human. Papyrus holds out a hand to you. Set forward and meet your demise. You tell Papyrus, you don't want to fight. You don't have a choice. If you will not come to me, I will hunt you down. You take a step forward and tell Papyrus you have no intention of hurting him. That's good because you won't have a chance. Oh, is he going to kill me? <laughs> he killed me. <laughs> of course he did. The ground rumbles between your feet. You look down. You only have a second to register the orange glow when you suddenly have no vision. There is pain between your eyes. You have died. At least you died in battle, human. That is the one mercy, the only mercy I know. Okay, Papyrus. Okay. You anticipate the bone beneath you and quickly step back. Your eyes widen in surprise. Where you once stood is now a glowing orange bone. You realise that this must be what impaled you before. Congratulations, human. You were fast enough to survive the first move, says Papyrus. You cannot tell if he's being sarcastic or not. You thank him anyway. Papyrus tilts his head. His red pupils glow dully inside his eye songs. Hmm. Remaining polite will not get you far, human. As a member of the Royal Guard, I have a duty to kill you. Words will not dissuade me. You tell him you don't want to fight him. I can clearly see that, but... You, oh, gosh. You barely see an orange dot in the, your particular of vision before you feel something slam into the side of your head. Really? He killed me again? Papyrus. Really? Really? Come on, Papyrus. 
My goodness. Okay, your whole body goes numb and tingly, except your head. Your head is on fire. The pain is so intense you want to scream out, but you cannot. You see the top of your head slide off in front of you. It hits the ground before you finally die. He decapitated me? You have died. Lose something, human? Here comes Papyrus. Really, Papyrus? You stabbed me through the chest and now you decapitated me. Excuse you. How very rude. You anticipate the bone beneath you and quickly step back. We saw this part. You bend backwards to avoid the next attack. Another orange bone pierces through the air where you were. You take another step back. Papyrus seems to frown. Your reactions are better than I expected, human. I'll have to step it up. Oh dear, sounds like you'll need to focus. You brace yourself for the oncoming attacks. The ground rumbles beneath you and you remember from your earlier deaths what that means. You jump out of the way as several orange bones shoot up from the snow-covered earth. Through the corner of your eye, you see orange dots and you are ducking without thought. You dodge three more attacks, but you're a smidgen too slow for the abrunt barrage. Oh, for God's sake. Really, Papyrus? <laughs> this, this one, my goodness, Papyrus. You dodge three more attacks. But okay, in rapid succession, you were impaled by several separate attacks. One in your leg, one in your arm, one in your gut, one in your shoulder, and one in your lungs. Tearing, burning, debilitating pain fills you. Your mouth fills with blood as you drown in your own fluids. You cannot speak. You cannot make any noise aside from a low gurgle as you choke and die slowly. You have died. I don't want to do this, human. Why did you come here? Oh, here we go. Papyrus is now showing it, look. Much like Mama Tori didn't want to fight us either. Deep down, they don't want to do this. So Papyrus is, Papyrus is the same. Papyrus doesn't want to fight us. He doesn't want to do any of this. Aww. You roll, f you roll forward to avoid the barrage. It is frantic and... Th Wait, hold on. Let me just make it 100% sure. Oh, dear. You duck without thought, yeah. You roll forward to avoid the barrage. You roll forward to avoid both. It's a frantic and thoughtless move to avoid the barrage. Unfortunately, you're panicked to not die painfully again. You put too much effort into your roll. You roll directly into a waiting bone that impaled you like a knife in butter. You've died. I'm sorry. Here comes Papyrus. Yeah, so Papyrus is honestly losing the will to fight right now. He doesn't want to do this. You can tell he no longer has the will to, to do this at the moment, so you roll forward to avoid the barrage and pop back up before you hit the next attack. You offer him a small smile and say you don't want to fight. Papyrus sits back from you, his hand clenched into fist. It doesn't matter, human, I have to do this. In this world, it's kill or be killed. But you have a choice, Papyrus. You don't have to do that. Like, you don't have to kill me all the time. You disagree. You tell me you don't have to fight. Ha! Huh, he scoffs. You tell him neither of you have to fight. And what would you suggest? The papyrus snaps you. I let you go and what? You will die anyway. You will not. Or, well, you won't stay dead. You offer him a smile. You won't die and neither will any monster. You don't want to hurt anyone. You think Papyrus feels the same way? You want to show him mercy and you ask... You ask he does the same to you. Absurd! Me show a human mercy? Mahaha! <laughs> Papyrus throws his head back and laughs. It feels false. I am the great Papyrus. I have the highest... Count. Human, do you understand what that means? It means I have to capture and kill more humans than any other royal god. It's all I do. It's all I can ever do. You disagree. You remind him about his puzzles. Puzzles to trap and kill humans. Regardless of intentions, they were nice puzzles. They have similar things on the surface, minus the lethality. He shakes his head fiercely. Stop trying to dissuade me. Human, you will die. If not by me, by, by someone else. You won't die. He doesn't have to fight you. He hesitates. Why why are you trying so hard, human? 
Oh, okay, so it's in this part here. This is how we get to the pirates. So we have to go through the pirates to fight and then engage our um, being with him romantically. Okay, you want to be his friend. I don't understand. I tried to kill you repeatedly. You don't even seem angry. Papyrus lifts his weight uneasily. It's hard to use expression, but you get the distinct feeling he's uncomfortable, remorseful. You remind him that you are alive now. But I... Do you not think I am capable of it, human? No, no, you were quite sure he could kill you. However, you also think he could not kill you too. You think you two could be friends? Really good friends. You give him a smile and hold out your hand. You would like to be his friend, if he would accept it. Papyrus stares at your hand for several seconds. His hands are clenching into fists. You keep your hand out, partially waiting. His voice is small when he asks, why? Oh, pfft. Okay, so this is how we start Sans's route. I need to click this one. You tell Papyrus it's because you want to be a good, in good terms with your future, <laughs> future in-law. Oh my god. <laughs> he nearly, he technically killed me several times, okay? So how does this fight end? How do we convince him? We, we literally let him know that we have things for his brother. <laughs> You think you hear the sound of someone choke in the background? Oh my god, he's listening in, isn't he? Sans is listening in the background. Because <laughs> he's always watching Papyrus, isn't he? So he probably heard me. <laughs> Just imagine him hearing that and he's like... Mm. You think you hear the sound of someone choking in the background? We can't be too sure because Flowery loudly sighs. You can do so much better than the trash bag, Twinkle. Yeah, but I want the smiley trash bag, Flowey, in this run-through. I'm then going to want you in another run-through and Papyrus in the other one, then Gasto, okay? We're taking it one boy at a time. <laughs> Papyrus cocks his head to the side. I do not fully understand your words, but I think I get your intentions, I think. You can tell... You also tell him you think he's great. That makes him smile. I am. Very well, human. I will give you a chance. Stay alive and I will let you call yourself a friend of the great Papyrus. Be grateful, human. I'm sparing you. For now. You give Papyrus a hug. Oh my god, I hugged him. Yay! He stiffens immediately at your contact. <laughs> it takes him a solid 10 seconds of processing what you've done before he starts to awkwardly pat your back. Oh, bless. Uh human uh, are you broken <laughs> you <laughs> are you broken <laughs> oh my god he is precious i should be mad that he killed me so many times but i really don't care <laughs> i love his reaction you tell him that this is what friends and future family members do again you think you heard that choke sound, but you really can't be too sure. How strange. I wonder who that is. I see. Papyrus hesitantly hugs you back. Yay, you did it. You survived Snowden and made a friend. Is this normal? Papyrus asks Flowey while he hugs you. Yeah, says Flowey. Strange. Yeah, agrees Flowey. It's time to leave Snowden. End of Snowden! You only died six times. This is the lowest amount of deaths possible here. Way to go. You got a stick. I wonder what that could mean. You are currently romancing Sans. Good luck. <laughs> Yay! Also, we made two friends. We're now friends with Papyr. Can we make more than two? We're friends with the deer. We're friends with Violet. We're also friends with... Um, Papyrus now, Greater Dog is our friend. Sans probably heard what I said. But yay, that was Snowden. <laughs> ah, that was beautiful. <laughs> oh, but poor, poor Papyrus. Poor baby. I would not say that to his face though. P please bear that in mind. Okay, 
So now we're going to head to the narrow cavern, which leads into Waterfall. So I'll see you guys in the next episode.